Hi there, my name's Andy, and welcome to The Flippin' Husband. Now this week's project is a small hall, or perhaps known as a council table. This is meant to be by your door when you come home, give you a place to throw your keys in your wallet. Now the piece is pretty old, I'm guessing the 1950s, but I do know that it has some water damage. And you can see the veneer on that bottom shelf is lifted off the, the plywood. So we're gonna have to take a look at that. And here's the star of this piece. Now that center is a is book matched walnut veneer. And I'm really excited to see what that looks like. But before we get there, of course, it's bath time. So we start off as always with my spray bottle and some TSP and a whole lot of scrubbing. This piece was dirty. It had been in the garage and in the barn for who knows how long. You guys saw earlier how wobbly those legs were. So I really thought I was just gonna pop them off um, with no issues. But as you can see, I did end up breaking that plywood base. What I learned later is there are small nails that are driven at an angle through the tenon of that leg. And on each case, I ended up doing a little bit of damage to the top, uh, but that's okay. We can fix that with a little bit of glue and some sanding. Well, with the legs off, I did get busy putting some glue in the cracks that I created. And then this happened. I tell you, that jumped me and I do a quick check, make sure I have all my fingers. Um, those spring clamps are powerful, and if you don't get them on all the way, they do fly off. I found a couple of other spots on the piece that needed a little glue, so I went ahead and took care of that real quick. Then I changed my focus to this veneer on the bottom shelf. I really want to save this. My vision is to stain this bottom shelf and bring out that wood grain. Uh, so I'm taking my time. I'm using a toothpick to push glue in the space between the veneer and the plywood. And it's my hope that I'll be able to clamp that down with a couple pieces of wood and flatten that ripple in the veneer out. I did use some parchment paper. I'm trying not to glue that block to the piece and that paper is gonna allow me to have a little barrier between the glue and that block that I'm using to flatten that out. But I did do this on both sides, uh, and you can certainly see the ripple in that veneer with this shot. I'm using as many clamps as I can fit into this space, trying to get that nice even pressure across that veneer, uh, doing everything I can to see if I can't save that and, and flatten it out. And there's the cause of so much time and frustration. That's that brad that was driven up through the tenon on each of the legs. I did pull them out one at a time, tapping them with a hammer and then grabbing a hold of them with these vice grips. After I pulled the legs out, I saw that there was glue left in here from the original build back, <laughs> way back when. And I was lucky enough to find a Faulkner bit, which is the same diameter as these holes. So I just real gentle went ahead and drilled just deep enough to take that glue out without making the hole any deeper. I grabbed my chisel and cleaned up the rest of the glue on that bottom. Before I reassemble this piece, I thought I would take a look at this top. I do have a suspicion that it was finished with shellac. So I grabbed my denatured alcohol and rubbed it on there, 
just to see if I could dissolve that shellac. This veneer is ultra thin and I really don't want to try and sand that finish off. If I can scrape it off or dissolve it, I'm going to be in a much, much better place. And I was happy to see that, in fact, it is a shellac finish. And I was able to work my way through it. Um, took some time and ultimately ended up using a razor blade as a scraper, like a little micro scraper. And that shellac uh, top coat came off pretty easily. Yeah, quick note about the denatured alcohol in shellac. It definitely will dissolve the shellac, but if you don't physically remove the shellac from the piece, when that alcohol evaporates, it'll simply reapply itself. So you wanna take advantage of the wetness um, and scrape off or wipe off as much of that shellac as you can. With that shellac top coat gone, we're starting to see more of this beautiful book matched walnut veneer. And this is really the reason that I'm working on this piece. We're gonna try and restore this top. It does have some cracks. There was water damage on the top, uh, but we're gonna take our time and sand gently, only by hand on this. I will not be using a power sander on the top of this. And I'll work my way from 220 to 320 grit paper and give a nice smooth finish. Hi Nico. How are you? How are you? You good? Despite my best effort to try to save the veneer on this bottom shelf, it just wasn't it wasn't worth saving. We had some cracks in it that required some putty. Uh, so ultimately I will be painting this. Uh, so I'm gonna give it a quick scuff sand. Uh, real light pressure, just looking to get this ready to accept some paint in the next step. Well, it's time to reattach the legs. I did choose to use epoxy, uh, which is a good glue if you've got gaps. Oh, hold on. What's up? Oh, yeah. Pro tip, take the little mixing spoon out <laughs> before you try to dispense the epoxy. Uh, so epoxy is a good choice if there's a little bit of gap between the two pieces that you're trying to, to glue together. And I wasn't sure with the, the legs if there was a little gap in there. So rather than using a yellow wood glue, I went ahead and used the epoxy. Well, this is the next day. So I've given about a day for that epoxy to cure on those legs. And Nico and I are out in the garage and we're gonna be applying some tongue oil to the top of this piece. Now the tongue oil is going to bring out the grain and hopefully really highlight that beautiful book matched walnut veneer. Quick tip about tongue oil. I like to apply it in very thin coats. None of the instructions will actually tell you to leave it on there almost puddled for 10 or 20 minutes before you wipe it off. Uh, but I find to get a much better result if I use very thin coats and then I do a coat every 12 hours. When I'm done with this piece, I'm gonna have probably four to five coats of tongue oil over the course of three or four days. And you can see right there, that's beautiful grain. It's time to paint the base of this little council table. So today I am using a chalk style paint in the color pewter. This week's project may be a small piece of furniture, but it certainly takes a, a good deal of time to, to bring it from really ugly and beat up to a beautifully refreshed piece. If you are enjoying watching this video, go ahead and hit that like button down below. Hit that subscribe button. I guarantee you it's not gonna cost you anything and it really helps my channel grow. So anything that you guys can do to give me a hand there, I really appreciate it. All right, now back to some more painting fun.
I want to cut in a real crisp, clean line on this transition between the edge of this piece and that top veneer. I considered using tape for that. Uh, I've really had mixed luck uh, applying tape in this type of situation in the past. So I found that it's best just to use a, a decent brush and go slow and take your time. Now, of course, holding a camera while doing this at the same time is a little difficult. Um, so I only did a little bit of it um, with the camera. I've given this chalk paint a couple of hours to dry, and now I'm going to go over the whole piece with this clear wax. These small pieces are great projects for someone who hasn't done any furniture refinishing in the past. Sometimes taking on something large like a nine drawer dresser or a very large piece can be intimidating, but these little pieces are forgiving. It gives you a chance to try different techniques and different styles. Now it's time to add the very subtle finishing touches to this piece. And today I'm gonna to be doing that with this black wax. Now keep in mind that the clear wax was put on maybe a day before and it had a chance to set up. And I'm going back over and I'm looking just to add some, some highlights and give it a little bit of a muted look and feel. And I do plan to leave a little bit of black wax in some of the recesses of the turnings of the legs to kind of give this piece uh, the look and feel that it's been around the block a couple of times, um, but do it in a real tasteful, clean, refreshed way. At least that's my, my goal. <laughs> You'll have to stick around for the grand reveal at the end to see if I'm actually able to pull this look off. At this point, I've got four, maybe five, very thin layers of tongue oil on the top of this piece. For the last couple applications, I'm mixing a couple of tablespoons of spar urethane with the tongue oil. And that's gonna give me a little bit more durability and a little bit more protection on the piece while still remaining a wipe on finish. So no brush strokes, no overlaps. It's a really great way to finish something off if you're using these rub-on oils, such as tongue oil. The finishing technique of using multiple very thin layers really adds to the depth of the look on the top of this piece. And that is so evident in this shot here. That walnut veneer grain, it just pops now. It looks fantastic. Definitely worth the extra time and effort. I think you've heard me say more than once, thin coats. Uh, so here I'm just making sure that there's no standing finish on the top of this and it's a nice, thin, even coat. Before we get to the final reveal, let's remind ourselves where we started with this piece.
Did you just did you just lick the table? Did you just lick the table? Oh my gosh, Nico.